guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to put together a succulent arrangement in this really pretty head planter. And I'm going to display it out here in the greenhouse because I think it's gonna be a beautiful addition. So we recently unboxed a huge load of gorgeous succulents from Mountain Crest Gardens. I have a small sampling of them up here on the table. I don't know how many we're gonna be able to fit in here because I think the diameter we're dealing with is maybe six, seven inches. You can fit a lot of succulents in six, seven inches though. I'll talk you through how I build a really full succulent arrangement, but I wanted to talk quick about this container because it did not have a drain hole when I bought it. It does now. What we use is a diamond tile drill bit. If you find something that you wanna use as a planter, if you can put a hole in it, it's best for the plants. We've done videos about non-draining containers before and how you can plant in them, but it's way more risky for the plants, much more maintenance for you. Um, so it's best if you can put a drain hole in your container. So we used a diamond tile drill bit and we went in from the top of the container rather than turning it upside down like I typically do because this is not even on the top. So we used some extensions and got the, you know, the drill bit long enough to reach the bottom. And then I poured in some cold water. That's really important because as you create that friction with your drill bit, uh, it creates a lot of heat and you don't want that to happen because it can cause it to crack. So cold water in the bottom and then we just went in with the drill and made our hole. So now we have a draining container which is exciting and I do have this gray saucer. It did not come with this container but I think that it matches close enough to where we can use this for any water that may drain out the bottom. Now the first thing I am going to do, I've got this little piece of paper towel. I don't do this all the time uh, but I'm going to put this at the bottom of the container so that our soil doesn't fall out. I find when I use cactus oil, which is what I like to use for the succulents, it's fast draining. It's a little bit more fine. You know, there's not a lot of chunks in it or like pieces of wood or anything like that. It's just more of a fine, finer soil blend. So it wants to go through the drain hole a little bit faster. So the um, paper towel will help with that. It'll break down over time, but it'll take it a while. And by then the succulents will be more rooted and it will, they will hold more soil into the container. So I'm gonna go ahead at this point and put some soil in not all the way to the top, but pretty close. I'd rather have to take soil out than add it in most cases. Okay, so let me turn this around so you can see. That's about how full I like to do it. Now, I'm gonna start with this string of turtles right here. This one I have had actually for a little while. I pulled a couple of plants that I had in our studio out here because like this one, while I did get another string of turtles, this came in the mountain crest load, but it's not as drapey as this one. And I wanted to start with something with a ton of drape. So that's what we're gonna go in with first here. Now succulents, you can really manipulate their roots. I'm gonna groom any little like dried bits. I should go get a brush. We'll do a good clean in though when we're all done. So there's our first succulent kind of tucked in the edge there. In the end, what I kind of want to do is kind of like drape this around her neck, kind of like almost like a scarf kind of look. So we'll blouse that up in a little while. Then I want some type of a rosette. This is a Semper Vivum Nephitos. This one's got a pretty good root system going on. And this is a really good time to groom off any dead leaves at the base of the plant. You can see a few in here. You can see right there that I'm pretty aggressive with the root system and that's okay, they can handle it. You'll also notice as I put these in, I'm gonna nest them pretty close to each other, like one right on top of the other. And the thing about succulents is you can do that. Uh, you can expect about a year's worth out of a really tightly packed arrangement. You might have to go in and you know, groom off little leaves here and there, but they can handle being really snugly planted together for a while before you need to maybe think about taking something apart and repotting something. You know what though? This one is so round, it's like a round sphere. It might be better if I lay it on this side. See how it kind of nests right there and do something that's got a little bit more drape right here. See how the roots are exposed right now? They won't be in the end because this will end up being sort of a mounded kind of succulent arrangement as I build everything together. But in the end, they will all have soil around all their roots. There will be no exposed roots. Okay, I'm gonna try, this is a Semper Vivum Tembi right here and it's got the draping babies. The thing is, is I don't wanna go in with anything too fine because this has got a finer texture. I want something that's a little bolder, more rosette shaped. Okay, I'm being very ginger. I don't wanna break any more of the babies off this one. At this point, you could pull these off. Do you see these little roots right here? They have little white roots and they would root right in. Okay, here we go. We'll see if this one will work a little better. It kind of bridges the gap a little bit better between the fine texture and the bold. And we're just gonna pop this one right in here because it's got roots and it will root in. Yeah. Oh, oh. 
Semper Vive, I'm on the move. That will be a little, I'm going to just put this to the side <laughs> until I'm ready to uh, tuck that one in better. This is a Cal and Coe Lavender Scallops. Really nice. A lot of times with this type of succulent, you can see four separate stems. You can pull them apart like that. And that way you can manipulate the plant, like the structure of it, any way you want. Okay, so usually I'll go in with a smaller one. Let's see if I can turn this around so you can see. Then we've got another, let's see, I don't like the look of this leaf, so we're gonna take that off. I'm gonna stack that one right on top. Then our next one goes in, see that? And then our tallest one. Oh yeah, that looks really pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some soil, tuck it in around these plants. Okay, next one is the Echeveria Lola. This used to be my, my top favorite succulent. I just love the shape. I still love it. I just, I don't know that I have like an actual favorite favorite, but every time I saw Lola, uh, I would pick it up because I thought they were so pretty. This one happens to have beautiful blooms. So we're gonna tuck her in right here. The blooms won't last forever. So you wanna make sure you do like the color of the succulent you're putting in and don't just use it for the blooms. Just a bonus in this case. Okay, now we've got some Sedum Aurora Pink Jelly Beans. These are awesome to tuck in. Cause again, we've got three stems in here. And we're just gonna pull them all apart. I want one through here thread it through. Let me turn it around so you can see. Does that look like a flower crown? It's so pretty. I hope it's helpful to see what it looks like from the back because it does end up being like a mounded crown of soil. Um, so this type we do have to be a little bit more careful, especially until they root. Once they root in, you know, the, the roots will hold the soil together. But for a while there, we're going to be using a syringe and just watering it very carefully and sparingly. That way a bunch of water doesn't run out. Now, maybe a touch of the wild here. This is a Senecio, right? Of some kind, there's no tag. Oh yeah, Senecio scapo scaposus. A little grooming on the bottom here. These plants, they can sense when they're planted really close together and they just naturally don't put on a lot of extra growth. And that's why we can get away with it with succulents. You couldn't do this with like super tunias. <laughs> like pack 10 super tunias in a container. They're gonna, they're gonna choke each other out. They're not gonna love that but succulents act completely different. I'm kind of doing this backwards. I usually do like the ring around first, so maybe I'll do that. Do the ring around first and then put the top plants in because you're creating kind of a natural bowl with the plants you put on the outer ring. I think that'll work right there, but I want to put something drapey. Um, I've got a variegated string of pearls. I think I want to use just a regular string of pearls. The contrast is a little higher that into the edge. Oh yeah, that's nice. There we go. Oh, that looks so good from the front. <laughs> it does not look good from the back right now. Next one is an Aeonium called Sun Cup. So I'm holding these two heavier plants up. <laughs> well, I prep some more succulents to tuck in around the base. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh. We're almost there. I need to tuck one in right here. This is a set of area called Blue Elf. Oh, I'm really pleased with this. It's looking pretty. Oh, what a mess. Oh, what an absolute mess I'm making. You can tell I've been out of this for a while. I used to be able to do these like with no mess at all. I was so used to doing them. Okay, now this is a uh, an Echeveria called Afterglow. And I've got more of the pink jelly bean sedums that I'm actually going to tuck in the front. Let me get cleaned up and turn this thing around real quick. Okay, so this is the only spot I'm seeing that has a little bit of gappage. We'll take care of that. Just strip these down to pretty much just roots and stem, and they will nest right down in the potting soil that we have in there. I need a pen. Do you have a pen? I don't. I'm gonna use this. This is a drill thing. Just need to create a little hole here. This to slide down in, like so. The arrangement is essentially done at this point. What I like to do is go along the edge and I can usually slide a finger in between the succulents and I just try to pack soil down as much as I can so that there is a little bit of a lip. While the soil is doing this inside the container, it goes down lower than the lip. So if water does run down the hill of soil, it can kind of pool there at the lip instead of subbing right over the sides. 
and I think I think we got it it's so pretty now like I said the flowers I positioned the succulent the way the succulent nested the best in the arrangement while I would have liked to have maybe the flowers come out right here it didn't make sense for the long-term look of the arrangement for me so I just kind of let the flowers be where they where they needed to go uh, based on where the succulent fit the best but I think it looks so pretty all these cool tones together and all the different textures and color I'm gonna grab some water and show you how I water it I've got a syringe. I actually have a bigger one that has a nice little tip. The tip fell off of this one, but this will work. So I just drop water in that syringe and then just gently between succulents, add water in. It just allows me to be very controlled about where the water goes. That way we don't have a huge mess on our hands. Okay. I think she looks so beautiful right here. I'm excited and I think that these plants are going to really like this location. I mean, they get a ton of light in here. We have the shades already drawn though because even in the winter time, that sun heats this structure up so much. If you were putting this inside, you would want to make sure it's somewhere in like a west or a south facing window. It doesn't necessarily need to be in like direct sun, but it needs to be in super, super bright light. In the summer months for us here, where it gets pretty extreme, extreme heat, we wouldn't be able to place this outside in full sun in the afternoon. It would fry some of the softer succulents. The uh, sempervivums would do great, but some of these other things need a little bit more protection. So anyway, just kind of keep that in mind. And this can be inside all the time, or I could move it out once uh, temperatures heat up a little bit. The semps, of course, they are hardy, mostly down to like zone, like anywhere from zone four or five, maybe zone three, some of them. But the rest of what I used are not hardy enough to be outside yet, but they look gorgeous in here. Great color. Anyway, it had been a while since we've done an arrangement like this. And since we had so many beautiful plants, it just made sense to put something like this together and really talk through, you know, again, packing plants in like this and how it is possible in this type of container. I know I'll still get a lot of questions about it, but it is possible. Uh, and then what you do with non-draining containers, because it is fun. It kind of opens up the world of possibilities when you know you see something and you think I could just pop a hole in that, make that into a planter. Easy. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.